Hello, my name is Jay and welcome to the PBJ series of channels. This is the Projects by Jay channel. This video is a how to or more correctly how not to video on how to fill a knot in a piece of wood with epoxy resin. This was done for a cherry wood shelf that Mrs. PBJ asked me to make and it looked like this. Mrs. PBJ did the wood burning for this project and if you're watching this on YouTube there should be a link up here somewhere to that shelf. I'm also on Rumble but I don't know how to drop the hyperlinks on Rumble yet. To give you a better understanding of what can be done with epoxy resin there will be a link at the end of this video to another video showing how epoxy resin was used in the making of a wood compass that came out much better and I will be posting these videos together. If you like what I'm doing Please smash the like button, click the subscribe button, and share these videos. Don't forget to click the notification bell or icon so you get notified when I upload fresh content. And please leave a comment about what you liked or didn't like, just be respectful. Safety. When you are working with tools, make sure you read and understand all the instructions and directions that came with your tools powered or otherwise better to be safe than hurt and always wear proper PPE that includes dust protection hearing protection and eye protection in the shop and always have a cell phone with you so you can call and summon aid if you need to at this time I have no sponsors or endorsements when that happens I will let my viewers know by updating any posted videos if somehow any of them do get a sponsorship and for anyone watching this that is looking to sponsor someone, I am open to discussing sponsorships with any company that treats customers fairly, with respect and dignity, and that makes sense on this platform. Lastly, enjoy. Life is supposed to be fun, and as I tell my family, never underestimate the importance of happiness in your life. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy what you see. So here's that knot and that cherry I was using, I'm using for the bookshelf, and let me go ahead and zoom in on that. And as we can see, the knot goes all the way through the wood. See? So, so I'm going to go ahead and fill this knot with epoxy. But before I do that, one of the problems with epoxy is that it tends to absorb into the wood and as it absorbs into, it absorbs into the wood and releases gas into the epoxy and you start getting these air bubbles which are kind of unsightly. So the way you prevent this from happening is you paint the inside surface where the epoxy is going to touch the wood with some type of polyurethane because that will seal that edge prevent the epoxy from absorbing further. You can also do it by painting the inside with the epoxy itself as long as you use a couple of thin layers. One of the advantages to using the polyurethane is if you use a water-based gloss polyurethane it tends to seal it with with one or two coats and it's it's really quick it's simple it dries and you can put the second coat on probably within just a couple hours the problem with using the, the standard slow setting epoxy which is what I'm going to use to fill that knot is that the slow setting epoxy when you put it on there it's going to take many many hours before you can go ahead and put the second coat on and then many more hours before you can go ahead and put the the epo pour the epoxy in there so I'm going to go ahead and put the polyurethane on. Here's my knot. And here's the stuff that I'm going to use. I'm going to need to go ahead and seal this. I have some Averithane polyurethane. This is a gloss. It's interior. Oh, I don't care. If it's not going to be exposed to weather, but it's going to be inside the wood anyway. And this is a water-based. I've got a couple of the really, really cheap brushes. I want the smaller one to really get deep inside those little, those little nooks and crannies, but I'm not going to spend the whole day doing it. A little piece of wood for a stir stick, some gloves, and even though this water-based stuff is very low VOC, if any, I don't think it's got any VOCs in it. For the sake of my poor little lungs, I'm going to go ahead and wear a, a mask anyway while I do it. Yeah, while I use it. Now, with the polyurethane, after you open it up, 
first of all, you never want to shake polyurethane. That just puts bubbles in it that's not necessary. But with the polyurethane, what you want to do is once you open it is the oil base is a lot worse with the water. I just want to stir it to make sure it's nice and evenly stirred. The reason for the O on there is actually because I had two cans at once. This was an older can. I had a newer can also I was using for a different project. Just want to stir it nice and easy so it doesn't add bubbles to the mix. Again, even though I'm not going to be using this on the surface of the exterior, I do want it to not have bubbles in it. So I'm going to put my mask on and I prefer using an opener, a paint can opener and usually if you buy some uh, like a five gallon or even a gallon of paint from one of the big box stores they'll usually give you one of these and a couple of stir sticks for free. It's always worth taking. Even if you don't think you can use them, go ahead and take them. I've got several of those and it, every once in a while while I'm doing projects I'll find that I'm down to one in the drawer and then I'll find them again I'll be up to my three and then over time as I'm using I'll find one down to one in the drawer so it's a good idea to have the extras. So now that that's stirred and again it really didn't need it I don't think but what the heck and the gloves are it's not because this stuff is so it's not dangerous as much as it is, just I don't want it on my hands, because then I have to clean it off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and just, and this is not for appearance, this is just for coverage. I'm going to get in there and really dab that stuff in there. Now, I'm not putting paint. I'm not going to go ahead and put any tape to block the polyurethane from like reaching towards the bottom and the reason is because I don't want to stop this from possibly having even the smallest little layer on the outside that might allow the the air to leak in when I put the epoxy pour. I know I'm going to have to sand this. I might as well just sand off the poly that happens to get onto the outside of the wood. This blue rubber mat that's on my uh, workbench, this is a Rockler mat. If you're doing a glue up, it keeps glue from getting all over your workbench and nastying up your workbench. It's good if you're staining and painting and anything you don't want the drippings to get down. Still just making sure I cover every square millimeter and a half of what's available to keep from getting bubbles and I think in the I'm looking and I'm concerned about the epoxy pour bubbles not the so much a little with the bubbles now because if those break if bubbles appear and they break that will lead to uh, a source for the gas in the wood to enter the epoxy when it's poured I think that's pretty good. I can't see anywhere in there. It's a good idea to have a light. Yeah, that looks nice and wet inside. It looks like there's a spot right in here that might be susceptible. But with this extra light, I can see the air bubbles. Let me just go ahead and get rid of some of that excess. I think that's pretty good. Let that sit for a couple hours. I'm going to go ahead and do another coat of that. Only I'm not going to bore you with it. The next time you see this will be after it has a second coat when I go to pour the epoxy in. So, um, we're back for another day. We're working on the, the cherry shelf for my wife. And so far we've got the corners cut out. They need to be sanded. Everybody loves sanding. And I've got two, a shelf and a, a, a backer. Uh, my wife hasn't really decided which piece she wants for the shelf and which piece she wants for the backer. The backer, we're going to put some pit pegs. I'm thinking about uh, taking some of the pieces of the cutouts from, from this stuff here and using that for, they hook the pegs out of it. But today, what I need to do is I need to fix this hole here in the wood. 
This is from uh, a knot. And I'm going to stabilize this with some epoxy. And the epoxy I'm going to use is total boat epoxy. This is a two-part epoxy. Actually, all epoxies are two-part epoxies, as far as I know. This one is low VOC. When anybody that I ever watch on YouTube recommends a product sponsored or not, and this is not sponsored, total boat by and large is the one that they recommend. This particular formulation comes in the one-to-one, -one, so if I put one ounce of this, I put one ounce of that, a gallon, a gallon, whatever amount I use is exactly the same. It also comes in other formulations. There are formulations where the resin to a harder ratio is like five to one, so you use five part resin to one part uh, hardener, or three to one I've seen, I've used three to one. So. One of the things you want to do is you always want to read the instructions on the back of your containers. You, you don't want to, to just start mixing because if you have inadvertently purchased a epoxy that requires a different combination of or formulation, you're not going to end up with epoxy. You're going to end up with something that's not epoxy. Also for this, I'm going to need some paper tape. I got a couple rolls because this is the one I'm going to start with, but I don't know if I have enough for it. I probably do, but just in case I have some backup. I have gloves, some way to measure these things, this, this stuff. Again, this is one-to-one. -one. I'm only going to be filling this, this particular knot here, so I don't need a heck of a lot. I've got a stirring stick. Here's a little tip for us. I eat popsicles. I don't throw away the sticks, I save them. These things are great for like use with epoxy as stir sticks. I also have wooden dowel type handle from foam brushes that I can use for dowels or other purposes. So I save those things in a little basket. The next thing I want to do is get set up for mixing this stuff. So since this is a one-to-one -one mixture and I only need a little knot hole, I got a couple of these little measuring cups. I'm just going to mark these A and B. And I'm actually going to do the same thing with my sticks. And the reason I want to do that is because I don't want the epoxy to mix together until I'm ready for them to. Now the instructions say besides using equal part it all the parts, it also says that it wants me to stir for three to five minutes. Now one of the problems with these epoxies is that they tend to get bubbles in it. We've already coated the inside of the knot with polyurethane to help prevent the gas exchange in the wood here. One of the things I've noticed is that if you mix for a minute or two minutes or even three minutes and pour it in, you're going to get a lot more bubbles than if you mix for five minutes. So when I mix this, I'm actually going to pull out my cell phone and I'm going to ask Siri to give me a timer for five minutes and I'm going to stir this for five full minutes. Watch me measure this and stuff like that is kind of boring, but before I even do that, I need to make sure I take one side of this so that I trap the epoxy. And I'm going to go ahead and put my tape on this side only because the hole on this side is roughly about maybe a half an inch in size. This one here is close to an inch in size. It'll be easier to pour in from the top than out through the bottom. Plus it actually kind of looks like a cone that goes down so I think this will also be, can be a better pour if I go from the top. So I'm going to go ahead and take my tape. If you've ever had epoxy leak through your taping, you'll attest to why I'm doing this. So I have plenty of tape and I think that's going to be quite sufficient. Now, one thing that I can do, since I do have another piece of 
this cherry, I can clamp these two pieces together. This will force the tape to really be pressed up against that wood and it'll ensure that I'm not going to have any leakage. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp these two pieces together. The instructions basically want me to protect myself, so I'm going to put on my gloves. Then I'm going to put on my mask. One of the things you definitely want to make sure as you're pouring this is you're doing it at eye level. If your eye is not at the same level as what you're pouring, you're not going to be able to measure it accurately. Give me a five minute timer. I've gone ahead and poured my A and B into here. And it's like, it's like seriously mixing pudding right now. And I set my, my phone to give me a five minute timer. I'm going to go ahead and stir the heck out of this stuff. I hope it's not too cold. I'm going to make sure I scrape the sides. Then I'm going to go ahead and stir this for five minutes, but I'm not going to bore you with it. So one of the nice things is, uh, believe it or not, I actually have been stirring this for five minutes. You don't know, but I have been. And it's gotten quite thin. I don't know if it's because I've been holding it in my hand that's been warming it up, but it and that is five minutes. So let me stop that. I'm going to zoom on in. My, uh, my battery died. Take a nice low heat. And you want to go over the bubbles just a little bit. Now, if I hit this enough, that I set the tape on fire or start melting the rubber, melting the rubber, I've obviously poured too much. This one seems to be doing okay, the, the large pour. This smaller pour here seems to be absorbing the epoxy, so I'm going to pour a little bit more on there. These two here are really more like I'm just playing with them. It's gotten a little warmer. It is starting to thicken up again, but it's still going to take quite a bit of time for it to fully cure. These two I'm just playing with. So, at this point, I'm going to find a place where I can put these, I don't see any leakage coming through. I'm going to find a place where I can put these so that they can settle. The big one, I'm probably going to take this into the back porch. Don't do any sanding over there so it's going to be free from dust. The epoxy is dried and because of the fact that it is so cold, the epoxy ended up all opaque like this. What happens is epoxy, because it's so thick, all those little air bubbles that appear in the epoxy while it's, you're stirring and it's curing, they're unable to raise to the surface and so what ends up happening is that they stay inside the mix and because it stays in the mix like this you end up getting this opacity. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to surface this. I'm going to plane this down with this number four hand plane and this is a bench dog hand plane. I got this from Rockler many years back. Uh, this is not a sponsored tool or a sponsored video but I got this when I was first starting to purchase 
planes and I wanted a number four and I didn't want to buy one of the super, super expensive ones. This was in between the Stanley number four and the super expensive number four. I'm going to put that here for my bench dogs. I've got a couple thin pieces of pine here, pine strips. This is much, pine is much softer than cherry. So these dogs are metal, they're like steel. I don't want to dig those directly into the cherry because those will end, uh, that'll end up uh, denting the wood. So this pine, which is much softer than the cherry, will take the dents and keep the wood from moving around. Um, uh, it, uh, um, and, um, uh, uh, unless you're using a five-minute epoxy, you're going to have to wait at least, like, how, uh, ten hours, uh, yeah, probably eight hours, whereas with, if you use the epoxy to do it, at least four, um, the, um, uh, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, my, uh, 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 um, anyway, um, so you, uh, the, the, uh, from, it's, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, 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 um
uh, continued back of your uh, um, um, now here's the the, the little uh, uh, um, uh, the, the is can be up uh, uh, um, the um, 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 uh, it's a, it's, I, a, um, um,